Women sit tied to their prams, tight ringlet curls and gold hoop twirls, chicken sandwich ham and spam, crushed crisps fit in the palm of their hands, right to their shoulder madmen may be, they stutter, shuffle and sneeze, jigging their leg, they hang their head, they scratch until their name is said, it's shouted and then repeated, everyone looks jealous and then remains seated, front desk lady snaps a selfie slang, fringe so slicked down it sits not hangs, Chit chat can be heard about yesterday's shellac. White tip this, eyelash that. Salon weekend spends and bad choice for men. Young girls batter their lashes and push out their chests as sitting in the waiting room feels like an opportunity to impress. Burnt orange plastic, a squeak, a squeaky turquoise chair. I like my girls with a big bum and lots of fucking hair. My name's Charlie Roxy Osborne. all these things that are going on up here yeah. and then suddenly you write them down and it's almost like you've they're like shared gone. something they're yeah yeah they're just gone yeah and they're not so heavy anymore. yeah yeah it's like a weight off your shoulders I would... so my work is like always very personal mm -hmm. and it often is triggered from a certain memory or a moment or maybe someone I've met the way that I like make my work it always changes so it's never one medium it's never always photography it's never always sculpture it's never always poetry so i dip in and out and i like to like tap into working in like a cross medium way my most recent piece was a piece called i'd still smash you and it's basically a piece about a breakup and it was it consisted of looking at the form of a brick and its connotations and its like meaning and I basically made these sculptures which were like chocolate bricks and plastic bricks and on top of them were like tattoos that like are associated with love and this idea of like permanence but also like nothing ever lasts and this idea of like desire and lust and yeah heartbreak basically and alongside these sculptures went a sound piece which I made and I basically recorded myself smashing bricks. It looped it over this really cheesy um, romantic music that I found as like a sample on YouTube. So I like funniness that can be brought into my work, like there's always an element of humour. I, I just constantly write things down and so that often develops into something that's basically about the women who sit in these clinics and that experience basically. started writing things down just as like a way to like document how I feel and like um, sort of get pen to paper um, because of like home life and thoughts and stuff and then that sort of developed into actually writing poems and um, I often write them about like a moment or like a memory and one in particular that while sat, sat waiting in the Camberwell sexual health clinic for like three hours and I was like surrounded by all these women and um, babies and it was like so chaotic and I just like wasn't in the right headspace to be in an environment like that so I just decided to start writing down what I was seeing and what I was thinking. I've just always being quite DIY with my style. If I see something in the charity shop that doesn't quite fit, I'm like, oh, I'll make it fit. I'll use a safety pin or I'll take the hem up, cut it up or something. It's always been whatever I see and whatever I gather, I somehow piece together and then I just step out my front door wearing it just because I want to. Sometimes it doesn't even matter like what the context of where I'm going is. It's just, I want to wear that like, it's very natural, it's like a way of feeling good about myself. I care way more about what I'm wearing than what I look like. Just accept who you are, try and feel as body confident as you can, but also we're so programmed to examine ourselves, like, oh, my waist needs to look smaller in comparison to my hips, or, oh, I need to have, like, sun-kissed skin, or, or oh, I need to pluck my eyebrows. But it's it's all just such bullshit. Like, I think the way forward is just like, maybe become obsessed over your clothes. Like, 
sounds like a weird you advice, can but your you can you change your clothes, but you can't change who you are. And it's way more creative, like, start making your own clothes, like, start drawing on your clothes, like, start cutting them up, start start wearing things that are weird. If you get head turns in the street, you've like, that's a successful day. Like, just make people smile. The funnest thing is like getting on the tube with my friends and we're about to go on a night out. People are literally like, <laughs> and then they sort of smile and you're like, we look weird, but at least we put a smile on your face. All of my photos from growing up, I'd be like head to toe, like dressed up in hats and wigs and my mum's like shoes and my dad's shoes and there's a really funny photo actually of me on the beach like wearing my dad's trainers but because he his he's quite like skatery in his style he had these like huge etni skate trainers and he's like no. six foot eight size 13 feet and I was like obsessed with walking around in them and they're literally like this big in comparison to like my tiny little feet. It's always been charity shop. Bristol's really good for charity shopping. I grew up there. Um, car boot sales. Car boot sales have become more of a thing now that I'm Lon in London. They're just better here. eBay, I love eBay. Most, uh, nearly everything I own is second hand or a present, if it's not a <laughs> present from someone else. I've gone through a lot of phases, but at the moment it's literally all of it into one, like n more so than ever. And I think that's down to probably living in London and probably having friends who are willing to dress however they want. Mm. And so that's kind of the influence really. It's like I could sit and list some people mm. off the top of my head, but I think I would struggle to actually name those people. Mm. Yeah, I think a lot of musicians, um, my like number one favourite is Mika Rottenberg. Film directors are like Harmony Kareem. I think there's also there's like so many people in music that like their just their like work ethic is in inspiring. Someone like Igloo Ghost, like he's so young and he's a producer. So I love like Princess Nokia's story and her message. We're twenty nineteen. We've got things like social media more so ever than before. But I think there's always going to be something new that you can do. It might come from a place which has already been done before. You might find an image and like somebody's done the same, the exact same thing. But that's a bad attitude, I think. Luna is basically something that me and my um, best friend Tara have like decided to set up off our own backs and it started because we were just both going through a lot and were phone calling each other like twice a day and FaceTiming like twice a day um, just talking like this is what happened today, this is how I feel and Tara just one day was like wait there's no, because she lives in Brighton, she was like wait there's nothing in Brighton right now that is like an opportunity to share and talk about the things that we're talking about and the things we were talking about were so common like everyone would be going through similar stuff but we just don't really have like public spaces to talk to them about it's she's like it's she was like it's a shame that those conversations often stay locked away in your bedroom with just one person on the phone and you sort of feel like it's a confession thing like it's not like this big oversharing thing and so Tara was like, I would love to set up these like safe spaces. It started off from like a, just a woman's thing, um, but it's open to anyone. But basically they share experiences of maybe like trauma, de like depression, mental health, breakups, just like normal stuff. And we wanted to start it from a like creative perspective. The safe space is also a gallery space mm -hmm. where we exhibit like people's work which maybe was inspired by their like mental health or um, maybe it's like a poetry corner like a stand-up poetry corner or maybe it's a gig space so it's like the crossing over of how you like can make work basically from these stories and that's basically our message yeah it's just started off at the moment as like an Instagram page and like we did this one um, 
a submission thing the other day which was like what does the word happiness mean to you and like people either responded in a um, photograph or a text message or um, a painting and like it was just this um, like immediate like get people talking about this word and what does it mean and stuff so yeah um, that's starting and we're gonna put on events and we're gonna yeah like get the ball rolling with that and then the other thing that I'm most excited about is I'm starting a collective with my like solid like friendship group that we're all in London and we basically want to change our exhibition norm like we don't want to have a white cube silent space we want to make it more of like a party or make it more of like an event and something fun and almost like a club night but it's our artwork and yeah we all make quite different stuff but we're very much all on the same page so we're quite excited like to get that going probably a bit hard but where yeah. do you see yourself in 15 years literally probably just doing what i'm doing but making a bit more money to fund it and by then i hope i've got more experience in doing exhibitions and hopefully i had a bit of a modeling moment and i've made some money from it so by then hopefully i've got some money saved in the bank and yeah just like keep like just being an artist basically